So this whole project started when I wanted to build a FPV platform for soaring up in the mountains. Originally, I was just going to take my Runcam Nano Wing that flew super well, take off the Runcam, and slap on an FPV system. But I decided not to, since the plane was pretty beat up from all the flights and tests I did with it, and also the way it was built made it a bit tricky to add an FPV system. So I decided I would just build a new one. To keep everything simple, the new wing is just the exact same as the previous one. Same 25-inch wingspan and same geometry. I built this one up, added the FPV system, configured the gyro, and was ready for a test flight. Actually, before I flew this, I tried using a lithium-ion battery. These batteries are known for having a higher energy density than LiPos, which is why they are commonly used for long-distance missions. My 2S lithium-ion battery didn't end up working because combined with my 2300 kV motor, it didn't have enough power, so I decided I would just switch back to the 3S LiPo. Upon testing the wing for the first time, it was clear the thing flew, but not that well. I tried messing around with the servo throw, CG placement, and other things, but it never really flew as well as the previous wing. This this was super confusing because both wings weighed about 370 grams and had the same wing area. This wing just felt super unstable at times, its cruising speed was really fast and it just felt less forgiving. Even with these issues, I still decided to bring the wing to the mountains because I didn't really know what else to do. The first FPV flight I did almost led to me losing the plane. For some reason, I decided it would be a good idea to fly from a tiny patch of green surrounded by rocks and trees. In the FPV feed, I pretty much couldn't see anything because the camera I was using was pretty trash. And that combined with the fact the wing was really unstable and fast truly made it feel like mission impossible trying to land the thing. But luckily I was able to land it, and I got really lucky because it totally looked like the wing was for sure going to crash into that tree. After that very eventful flight, we went to this very beautiful cliffside to fly, and it was definitely easier and less stressful, but it was still not very enjoyable because the wing would just keep rocking around, and the wind would just make it worse. I had a feeling something got messed up with the gyro, but I'm not entirely sure. After that, I was planning to do more tests to see what was wrong, but decided at that point just to build a new platform. For this new platform, I wanted it to be able to fly slower and also be more forgiving than the previous wing, while also being able to carry a 4K recording camera. Doing all this while still trying to keep the wing relatively small was a bit hard to wrap my head around, until I remembered seeing these pizza box flyers or plank wings. These flying wings generally don't fly the best and aren't the most aerodynamically efficient, but they are very good at maximizing surface area and minimizing structural weight, which is perfect for my application where I want to throw on more stuff, keep the wingspan about the same, and still have slow flight. This wing type is also extremely easy to build, which is great for testing different things as it's very easy to fix. With all that said, it's time to build. I started by measuring and cutting out a simple rectangle. Then I folded the front to create a step on the leading edge of the wing, also known as a KF airfoil. The wing had a wingspan of 27 inches and a cord length of 12 inches. After that, I added the walls of the body pod thing. I ended up needing to extend the nose since the motor was in the back which made the whole thing very hard to balance. Due to the fact the motor mount was just attached to some foam board, I strengthened it using some wood sticks and boards. Then I cut some wingtip vertical stabilizers for yaw stability. I then stripped off all the electronics from the previous wing and slapped it on. It was at this point I realized the CG was way too far back, so I added some extra pieces of foam to extend the nose, and that seemed to help get the CG further forward. The place I had the run cam mounted was not ideal as it would be very vulnerable to getting scratched up from landings, but I didn't really know where else to put it so I just left it there. For electronics, I was using a 2204-2300 kV motor, a 20 amp ESC, two 9 gram servos, a BYMED gyro, and a 850 mAh 3S LiPo. I did a few flights by myself just to tune the gyro and get the plank to fly better. The wing's not in my favor, but we're doing the test with more nose heavy, the more nose heavy. Huh. So it looks like the pitching up isn't an issue anymore, but definitely feels like it needs more throttle. Which, I mean, makes sense. This whole plane is a lot heavier than my other ones. Honestly, it's fine. Even with the wind, it's, it, it doesn't seem to be worried. There's a lot of headwind to it right now because there's always a tailwind. I don't know. It's because of the mountains over there. But it's, it's doing pretty good. It's just, it's really bright and my eyes are watering. But unfortunately, after those flights, I realized that the micro SD card in the run cam got corrupt. Okay, so that, this card was 
had most of the run cam video. I did download some of them when it did work, um, but it has the two videos I recorded today. I put it in the check and I, I don't know what is going on. 2039, 1980s. Can someone please explain to me um, how does this happen? I'm pretty sure it's just because it got corrupted somehow, but this is so weird. I've never seen this before. Like all these weird symbols in 2006. Yeah, um, I don't know, but I did, I got a, I got another micro SD to put in the Ron cam, but unfortunately I lost that video because I don't know how to recover it because <laughs> that's all that's in here. I just went back and did a couple more test flights and this time the Ron cam did record. And with the plane flying well, it was time for some real FPV. But unfortunately, the first time we went, I forgot the run cam and the SD card for the FPV goggles. Okay, so this is the battery, and then we have another battery under here. That's where the run cam goes, but I forgot it at home charging. <laughs> so yeah, that was pretty stupid on my part, but we did some flights anyways, and it flew really well. After we did a few flights there, we went to this nice like creek open area and this time we brought everything so we could do a proper like FPV flight. Okay, yeah, so I was saying before, um, so the, the FPV camera I'm using isn't that great. It's definitely has a lot of, um, it has like a bit of distortion and also kind of lags out a lot of time. Not lag, but just the quality's not great. Um, I don't have the OSD on board right now, but if I did, I could see what my battery voltage is and then that could indicate when I needed to uh, But yeah, I was saying before how I wanted to use this um, plank wing as a platform testing like a flight controller and stuff because um, if it crashes, it's really not that, it's really easy to build and stuff and easy to fix. Um, so yeah, that's my plan. It has a lot of wing areas, so it flies pretty good. Especially in the swing, it's so fun. Really? Yeah. Oh, I can see the mountains. Oh yeah, I, I'm like way high now. So, we're gonna call that for the flight. It's not because the battery's dead, um just because i think i did enough flying but yeah this is a pretty good platform for the fpv i think next step before i set this thing up with a flight controller and try to make it autonomous is get the gyro to be a bit more even though i'm not going to use this gyro for um when i do add the flight controller just want to see if i can fix it because it definitely likes the rock around it and i think that's just from it being over tuned sometimes but yeah it's really nice view can't wait to see the run cam footage because that's my 
most exciting part of uh, finding the things. For the last few flights of the video, we decided to set up next to the bluffs right behind our house during sunset, because there you get a nice view of the mountains and the clouds. And boy, was it pretty.